I'm a Chinese Malaysian who grew up in Australia. I went there to see what God is doing among the Zhuang people, and if I could make a difference in someone else's life. Originally, I was looking at going overseas. At one point, I had a conversation with an expert. I asked him, there's no place where people are really receptive, but there's just not enough workers, is there? And I was very surprised because he immediately said, oh yes, that would be the Chuang people. Decades ago, my grandparents left China in a boat, and here I am today going back. I'm part of something bigger. God is drawing Asians from all over the world back into his plans for the Zhuang. I think Asians have a particular opportunity for reaching out to the Zhuang. They uh, fit in very well with, uh, with the local population. They don't stand out as much as uh, Westerners. And in some ways, they can be closer in the culture than we are. I think it is easy to develop friendships with the Zhuang. They're pretty playful, pretty open and welcoming. Exciting. I'm not sure we're gonna get there. <laughs> The 19 million Zhuang are divided into 17 major dialect groups, and we'd love to see work started among each of those groups where there's no witness. Only one quarter of one percent of the Zhuang are Christian, and it's not because they're not responsive. We just need more people to come and share. There are many villages around that have never ever heard of Jesus, and I just think that's tragedy. Wasiesi I see a lot of John people are poor, so they are looking forward to a better life through better education, better job. To them, that is how they can be out of their village and live a happy life. But I know that is not the solution. I know that is not the truth. And many of them to go through witch doctor or even try to fortune telling so that they know their future. Yeah, but that doesn't help them to give them a better life. You know, I think at home, our culture sees Eastern spirituality as harmless. We don't think about the path it takes people down into fear. Hey, hello. Tasu And 
so when they hear that there's an all-powerful God who loves them and is more powerful than these evil spirits and wants to protect them from these evil spirits, that is truly good news to them, and they need to hear it. My desire is to tell them the truth, as many people as I can. Now, even though I might not see the result, but I just want to sow the seed. Here we've been amazed. There have been a number of occasions, especially in the villages, where uh, people were very responsive and said, yes, I want to follow this God. The first time they heard it, they're willing to make a decision. You know, that's what's most exciting to us, is seeing the local believers getting a heart to reach their own people. It's one Zhuang person telling another Zhuang person the good news, and then finding a way that they can serve and worship God in their own context and culture. Wasu 我问他祷告了以后怎么样，他觉得哦，心里面挺舒服的，就是因为有什么惧怕，有什么东西都给上帝了。We're hearing reports in some areas where there have been house churches for a while that they're seeing uh, many people coming together for some large meetings, groups where they're sending out people even into other minority groups and even to northern Vietnam to share the gospel. The Zhuang are a gateway people. They will go into other minorities, they will go into other countries, and we are already seeing that. The other day we went to an English corner, which was actually just the kids finishing school, but they were so interested in talking to us that they hung around and they even invited me to come into their classroom so I could teach them how to say g'day and other important English words. <laughs> it's a perfect opportunity. I mean, I could see that if anybody came to work with those youth, they would all be there and they're wanting to talk and wanting to share and they want to build relationships. So if somebody came with a heart for the youth, it's just this golden harvest. We've had short-term teams that have actually planted small churches within two weeks, believe it or not. They spend the first part of their outreach getting to know people, and then by the second week they're sharing, and sometimes before they even leave, they're out baptizing people in the river and getting them to meet in small groups. Well, there's so many opportunities, both long-term and short-term. I can look back and I think I missed out many, many years of blessing just um, because I didn't really answer his call. So if there's a tug in your heart and God is calling you, I just pray that you would answer that and obey it. So I will encourage people back home, even the desire to go out, don't be fearful. You just go out, he will open the way, he will lead you. The place that he will put you, there will peace and joy. I